Good morning. Good morning. I can tell it's already going to be one of those days. <laughs> Welcome to worship on this Reformation Day. For those of you at home, you'll want to have your home communion ready, some kind of wine or juice, some kind of bread or cracker. And for anyone, uh, we are looking for an Advent tradition. Uh, do you have an Advent tradition? We are planning to have Advent services coming up at the end of November and in December. We have two ideas already, Hold an Evening Prayer and Los Posadas, we're sharing with Holy Cross, and we're looking for a third tradition. So see me if you have one. And we have some more announcements. Good morning. So if you did not pick up your statement of giving last weekend, they are available in the back of the church in the narthex. Are you going to talk about trunk or treat? I will. Okay, then I'll skip that one. Uh, the All, which is our Arts and Worship Environment Committee, is preparing for All Saints Day, and they would like your help. There is a table back there uh, where you can write the name of a loved one who has passed on an angel. Write the name of the loved one on both sides of the angel. These angels will be hung in the sanctuary the weekend of November 5th and 6th, and they must be completed by tomorrow. Your Disaster Preparedness Committee is working on the plan to have Trinity ready for a very basic level one disaster response. So we are collecting items uh, to support electronic charging, access to water, and overnight parking. There are details in the Trinity Times, and if you would like to donate something, you can drop them off in the office a reception room. You are welcome to join with Holy Cross Santa Cruz in celebrating the Day of the Dead. This holiday is a Mexican holiday. It's celebrated each year from October 31st to November 2nd. Deceased family members are celebrated and pictures or mementos of loved ones may be placed on the table at the bottom of the ramp. Remember to turn back your clocks next Saturday, an hour before going to bed. It's spring forward in March and fall back in November. And thank you, Marty Stevens, for greeting and hosting this week's coffee hour. This is our last Sunday outside. We will be transitioning to the fellowship hall beginning in November. If you signed up to assist in hospitality or coffee hour, a meeting has been scheduled for this Tuesday, November 1st at 1030 in the morning here at the church. An email has been sent out to members who indicated interest on their time and talent survey, but all are welcome to come and help plan what fellowship will look like beginning this fall. If you have any questions, come and see me. Altar flowers today are in recognition of Reformation Sunday, and they were donated by Monica Deitchman. And so you're on, Stephanie. Thank you. Good morning. Well, this afternoon from 4 to 6, we're going to be doing trunk or treat here at the church. Uh, we invite everybody to bring their trunk. If you don't have decorations, we have plenty. We can help you decorate it. We have plenty of candy right now. And we'll be having popcorn and hot chocolate and apple cider and games and just come and enjoy. And we are quickly quickly heading into November, which if you're Trinity, you know that means Advent Festival. Um, this year, Advent Festival will be on November 19th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will again combine the Advent Festival with the Streets of Bethlehem production. Uh, we need lots of volunteers to make this happen each year, so if you're able to help with being a storekeeper, having a craft table, working in the kitchen for chili and hot dogs, uh, set up, take down, um, please let me know. Uh, uh, you can call the church and leave a message on my phone. You can email me, staff at tlcgresham.com. You can grab me as I'm walking around, whatever. But we're looking forward to another great year. And are we having Lexa again this year? Oh, yes. Okay, and so, you know, the big draw is always the ladies who make lefsa. So uh, please come and enjoy this afternoon and on November 19th. Thank you. Uh, 
I invite you to stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ and meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing loud and strong our gathering song, A Mighty Fortress, verses 1 and 2, hymn 504. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The children forward, I could really use your help today, and the young at heart. Good morning! It's Reformation Day! Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! It's so exciting! 
And we have a good microphone, yay. All right, look at these helpers. Very good. Nice. All right, can I have you say your name nice and loud into the microphone? Kaylee. Very good. Haley. Haley. Whoa. And Rowan. Very good. Good to have you here today. I brought with me a Bible, and I wanted to show you something fun about it, is if you open it up right about to the middle, you'll come to the Psalms. So if anybody says to look up a Psalm, just open your Bible right up to the middle. And the Psalms are the song book of the Bible. Lots and lots of beautiful songs are there. And today, Monica is going to read one of our favorites. It's a favorite of a lot of people here. And it was a favorite of Martin Luther. And he is one who helped to start the Lutheran church. And we go to a Lutheran church, right? And we are Lutherans. We are. Yeah, yeah we believe in Jesus. <laughs> and we do things in a way that Martin Luther kind of helped us figure out. And his favorite psalm has a lot of action in it and a lot of sounds. So Monica is going to read it, and the congregation is going to respond with the bold print, and we're going to have some breaks so that we can make some of the motions and the sounds. Are you, do you think you're excited about that? Yeah. yeah, because God protects us. Sometimes in storms, we might get afraid, or if something sad happens, we need God to be with us and to be a refuge, a place where we can hide, and God will protect us and look out for us. So let's listen, and when we hear something that we want to act out, then we will, okay? This Bible, the Bible is active. All right, go ahead. You ready? Psalm 46. <clears throat> you ready? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake, the mountains shake, the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, <laughs> and though the mountains tremble <laughs> with its tumult, there is a river whose streams makes glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at that break of day. The nations rage and the nations shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. Melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the words of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold, the one who makes war cease to in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still, man, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Amen. Very good. God is with us. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for being, thank you for being our shelter and our strength. Our shelter and our strength. Amen. Amen. Very good, very good. All right, I think we're having Sunday school today. Very good. Follow your teachers. It'll be so much fun. Our first reading is from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. And this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, 
for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. Word of God, word of life. Our second reading is out of Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did to show this his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law and by what works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Judeans who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household, but the son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Creator, and from our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today we commemorate the 505th anniversary of the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. Because of the Reformation, we focus on God's word in Scripture as a primary way God reveals God's self to us. Today the word that has been jumping up to me, has been the word heart from the scriptures. In the reading from Jeremiah, God is going to write God's law in the hearts of the people. And in this reading, uh, God, God tells us also that the greatest commandment is, the, is to love God with all our hearts. We need to know that's the most basic commandment. The scriptures involve this ideal that God has in mind, a vision that someday there will be peace, community, love, and belonging. It'll be something that we don't even have to think about. The first thing that, that is obvious to us every day, we'll automatically know that we belong to God and what we are for, which is love. When Jesus is asked what is the greatest commandment and he tells them to love God and neighbor, He's laying out a vision of the peaceable kingdom, the beloved community, a picture of heaven itself, a vision of balanced priorities and focus, of selflessness and sharing, a vision of loving and longing. So 505 years ago, Dr. Martin Luther posted those 95 theses for debate. He saw 
a major way the church was not matching with the vision of love that God is sharing with us. He began questioning the church authority and motives, and so eventually the Lutheran church was born out of struggle, and the world truly was changed. Today, we're having a commemoration of the Reformation rather than a celebration of it for a couple of reasons. We commemorate it because it's a mixed bag. There's a lot going on. The Reformation, had there were some, some awful things that came along with it. People used violence against each other, against um, and Martin Luther. He wrote and preached against Jewish people. Uh, some of his tracts that he wrote were used by the Nazi party. Kristallnacht, the day of broken glass, was done on Martin Luther's birthday as a connection between what he wrote and what was starting on that horrible night. Another reason it's a commemoration more than a celebration is that we haven't yet arrived at God's vision, right? We have a long way to go. There's a lot more to do. We're not at the loving community that Jesus articulated. The Lutheran Church has been marked by racism, homophobia, indifference to indigenous people's humanity. The Protestant Reformation has changed the world and the church, but God is not done with us yet. We, we have more to go on this journey. And so the Reformation is not a one-time event, but ongoing always. We must always be looking at ourselves, evaluating what are we doing that is loving and how can we be more loving and working more toward God's vision and God's kingdom. God is always turning us back again and again toward God. We keep forgetting that we are the apple of God's eye, that God made us in God's own loving image, claims us, redeems us, and names us. We forget how much God loves us and we forget how much God loves our neighbor. The heart is a symbol of love. And maybe that's part of the red today too, right? For the heart. It implies longing, connectedness, attachment. And maybe the heart is the part of us that is most in the image of God, right? We're all created in the image of God, but we all look different from each other. But our hearts, maybe that is the part that matches God's own heart. If we would just listen. Our hearts, like God's, cause us to dream, to envision, to hope for what could be. And God's dream is to create a universe in harmony and peace, to create a relationship, to let love reign above every value. Martin Luther, he also dreamed of a church that took away barriers between people and God. He dreamed of life free from fear of authoritarian father and an angry God that he always pictured. And I don't know uh, if he fully connected with his dream until he had been excommunicated, until he had been banished um, by the religious courts, um, the reading of his works banned, and until he was hidden away in Wartburg Castle. I think it was maybe through the severing of all those ties and all his comforts being taken away that he started to fully see uh, what God had in mind. He couldn't really dream the dream until he had nothing left to lose. And he had lots of time uh, which he chose to spend with God's word in scripture, translating it and hearing it again and again for the first time absorbing it, putting it into his own words, imagining how it would sound in people's ears, hearing it for the first time. Can you imagine? These people had been hearing scripture all their lives, but it had been in Latin. And to hear it in their own language for the very first time, I can just imagine him as he translated it. He had a lot of time to dream that dream, to connect with God's dream. And it was then no longer about those indulgences or buying your way into God's grace. He began uh, talking about God's grace being a free gift. And that, he, that idea came directly from the scriptures we've been reading today. God gives us hearts 
to dream too. And we are invested in the current reality. It does keep us comfortable in a lot of ways. It's hard to let ourselves hope for something so disturbing to our own comfort. But our hearts must be free to dream, must be softened to dream God's dream. There has to be more than this, right? There has to be. And that's why we're here, because we believe there is more than this. And not just a little more. We are assured that our dreams are not in vain, that God is powerful and will bring the dream of peace and love to reality for all God's creatures. God gave us hearts to connect. God didn't go it alone, but God created humankind to relate to, to talk with, to dream with, to act with. Our hearts produce a longing in us that won't let us go alone. We need each other. We need every last one. We need community. We need communion. We need each other. We are the body of Christ. And God gave us hearts to break. Back to the Wizard of Oz, I think of the Tin Man. He's given a heart, and the first thing is that it breaks because he has to say goodbye to Dorothy. And there he is, resting up again because his heart is breaking. And God's heart is always breaking. Uh, reading the scriptures, we can hear it breaking. In the Old Testament reading, God talks about the people breaking the covenant. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband. You can just hear God's heart breaking. That broken heart, unrequited love. That, that feeling when the reality doesn't match the dream. And God gave us hearts to break as well. Compassion. Our hearts break when we really let ourselves see our own brokenness and how we're not there yet. When we see injustice in this world hurting people, our hearts break when death seems to win the day. That pain we feel motivates us to do something. That pain is a message that it is time to change. It's a time to be different. Now today, there is some aspect of celebration. Jesus enjoyed a party, and he celebrates with every sheep that returns to the fold and every time that he turns us back to him. And it's okay to celebrate. There are certain things to be proud of, and that is going back to scripture, God turning us back to peace and love. And those are the hallmarks of being a Christian of being a Lutheran. Sometimes we get distracted by a few other things, but these faith, hope, and love are the foundation. And to let Jesus' heart be transplanted into us. So let us keep reforming. We, uh, we have operated under the myth that uh, the Reformation happened 505 years ago, and then that was it. But Jesus is offering us new life every single day. We'll be honest about where we're not matching God's vision, God's dream for us. And we will be in constant reformation to have process of evaluation and accountability, to build deeper relationships so that we can be honest and forthright, to let go of what is selfish and sinful, take away the barriers for our neighbors and those in need, to die each day with Christ to our own comfort and interest and rise again to the new life to share and serve with our neighbors in need. Jesus modeled it for us, dying and rising again, and that's what we get to do all the time. We say we believe in death and resurrection, so that's what we're practicing all the time. Let's live it and believe it. Let us let go to die with Christ so that he might raise us to new life, and so that vision of the peaceable kingdom will guide us where love is at the center. It's time for us to act on our faith and let God's dream reform us again and again. And that is one of the exciting things about these kind of anniversaries. It's a chance to look back and give thanks 
and to learn from all that has come before, to evaluate where we've been and where we're going. It's a chance to listen to our hearts, the deepest, deepest longing within each of us, and to listen to our neighbor's longings as well. And it is a chance to dream again, the dream of God, and look with hope for where God's leading us. So our necks aren't always strained by looking backwards, but we are looking forward toward God's dream and ever moving in that direction. It's a chance to consider who we want to be and who God is remaking us to be and to dream about what is yet to come. May the peace which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our hymn of the day, for by grace you have been saved, hymn 598, in your red hymnal, you can stand in body or spirit. confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's good creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on our hearts of your people that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment that we faithfully care for all your creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations, especially Russia and Ukraine. Where the nations are in an uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort for those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Calm all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis, and those in any need, especially all those affected by COVID-19. Anne Root, Peter Scholl, Sherry Bain, Suzanne Kenny, and all those we name before you now. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Bless all who are preparing for a baptism or affirmation of baptism. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach them your word and give them courage to proclaim their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Ella Mueller, Martin Luther and all the reformers. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of Christ is with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. Our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection. You pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body the people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he gave himself up for us our savior jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples he said take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks to god and gave it for all to drink he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me. God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we will have two stations for Holy Communion, one here and one here. If you, unless you specifically ask for it, uh, let's, let me start over. You will receive the wafer unless you specifically ask for a pod, which contains everything that you need. If you receive the wafer, then you'll need a cup. And the red liquid is the wine, and the white liquid is the grape juice. We do have gluten-free communion available upon request, so just let us know if that is what you need. You can take your communion at that very moment, or you can take it back at your seat either way. Uh, but um, one way or another, your empty cup gets brought back to these uh, baskets so that they can be washed for next week. Everyone is welcome at Christ's table. Christ invites you. Come, taste, and see.
The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn, The Church's One Foundation, verses 1 and 5. Hymn 654 in your red hymnal. <coughs> Go in peace with Christ beside you.